Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a full-time artist living in Scotland. As you can imagine, being a full-time artist means I have to study a lot. So in April, I took on a challenge where I paint outside every day for 30 days. The results are in the sketchbook. So today we're gonna to take a close look at them and I'm gonna talk more about the experience. And ne my next video, part two, is going to be more about the technical side of things, my materials, um, some of the tips and techniques I picked up along the way, and so much more. So if you're interested in that side of things, make sure you subscribe before you go or ask questions in the comments and I'll make sure I answer it in that video. Okay, so are you ready for an adventure? Let's go. These are the paintings. These are my little portals. <laughs> Each one of these is a different memory, a different day. And it's pretty amazing to look back on this and realize that this was only a month ago. <laughs> yet it feels like a distant memory. I went to some pretty incredible places during April. And I also spent many days just exploring my own neighborhood. And I focused on different things every single day. <laughs> some of them have really uh, special memories, you might say, like this one. I had an emergency root canal about an hour and a half before I painted that, but it helped distract me from the pain. <laughs> so let's take a closer look at some of these and I'll talk about the experience. started with probably one of the hardest paintings I've ever done. And the reason I say that is because I am not used to painting florals and I very quickly realized that I struggle to see values and shifts in color when the colors I'm looking at are extremely vibrant like this red. And I didn't quite have a grasp on what materials I wanted to use, especially brushes. So I think by the end of this first painting I had used eight or nine different brushes. I realized I needed to simplify my process, my materials, and just come up with a good workflow. faced with a different challenge on the second day, and that was 
very quickly moving clouds. The scene attracted me because of the bright green fields full of sheep in the distance and the river kind of snaking towards me in the foreground. And I started off with these bright summery colors, but soon the clouds moved in and everything turned gray. And I made the classic mistake of adjusting my colors and my values to match the changing light. And I had to kind of shake myself and say, Sarah, no, you have to stick with a specific lighting situation and go with it all the way to the end of the painting. But you know what? Something interesting happens when you go outside to paint. You can easily forget some of the things you know as an artist, some of the things you do every time you paint in the studio. It is a challenge to mix what you see in person, but that's the point. You learn so much by doing it. And the only way around it to get over these silly beginner mistakes is to keep doing it. And so I knew that because I was going to be going out again the next day and the next and the next, I would slowly start to remember these things and it would just become second nature. So I wasn't being hard on myself, I just decided to finish the painting as best as I could and move on. And of course, because April is so unpredictable, we had a few snowstorms. So a couple of the days I was sitting, looking out the window and painting whatever I could see. I think there was one day where I went on a walk and took a bunch of reference photos and then painted from my memory and the photo itself, but I was also using whatever I could see out my window as reference for color and light. So there are ways to kind of bridge the gap between using photo and what you can see out your window. And I know not everyone has a pretty garden or things that they can paint outside their window, but if you can, it's really valuable. You still get that sense of moving light and you have to sort of flatten everything that you can see. And that is one of the biggest challenges. And there were some days where it was snowing off and on and it was really cold, but I still went out and painted because it is always more enjoyable. It's okay to paint from the comfort of your car. There were some days where I went out and I was running errands or going for longer walks and it's the, the day started out beautiful, but by the time I was ready to paint, it was blistering cold or really, really windy or something like that. So I would just hunker down in my car, be nice and cozy, listen to some good music and paint. This particular day was gorgeous and sunny, but we had a sudden windstorm move in. So I was sitting in my car, staring at my subject. It was really relaxing and it kind of reminded me that it's okay to take time to breathe <laughs> during the painting, to assess the situation, to make these micro adjustments and not feel so rushed. And I know that sounds obvious, but when you're outside in the elements, sometimes you forget such simple things. When the wind is battering you or the sun is glaring down or constantly changing, you're just really distracted by all these changes. And when you're in the calmness of a space like your car or some other shelter, those things kind of melt away and you're able to focus a little bit more.
paint outside for two reasons. One, to relax, and two, to learn. On good days, these two things happen to result in a pretty painting. Other days, I can accept the bad paintings, knowing that I was at least relaxing in nature, and I learned something, even if it didn't feel like it. This process for painting from life every day for 30 days taught me an endless amount of lessons, but there are two really important ones that I want to share today. Each painting is just a painting. It's a stepping stone. It's not the best painting I'll ever do or the worst. None of the paintings are going to make or break my career or my life in any way. It's just a painting. It's made up of one brushstroke after another, one decision after another. Each day, each week, I add a few more brush miles and I get a little closer to my destination. I mean, if you're like me, a destination is a moving target. <laughs> Every time I think I'm about to stop and park, I realize I need to go just a little bit further. But why paint outside? Why make all this extra effort to paint from life rather than reference photos? Here's another analogy which I think a lot of people can relate to. Art is a language. Think of any of the times you've learned a new language. Each day you learn one or two new words, you get a little better at grammar, a little better at pronunciation, and yes, you can use flashcards to memorize words, you can listen to a CD and copy what the person says to learn different phrases, but nothing helps you learn faster than to have a real conversation with someone who is fluent in that language. To speak with someone who knows it inside and out, to learn how to react in the moment, to improvise, to hear the nuance of their accent to speak with the source. It's the same with art. Yes, you can learn a ton by painting from references, and that's an important part of the process. And you can learn a lot by copying someone else's painting or doing a tutorial. But to learn more deeply, to become more fluent in your craft, you must paint the source. Your understanding of color and light, how to mix what you see, how to flatten what's in front of you to the paper, how to react in the moment, everything is tested to the extreme outside. And when you do the work, day after day, you don't really have time to forget anything. You pick up where you left off the day before, and each new visual word or phrase snowballs into the next. If you listen to a lot of interviews with master painters, you've probably heard them say this over and over like a broken record, that nothing makes you learn faster than to paint or draw from life. And I always knew it was true, but I didn't really feel it until I did it every day for a month. And they say it takes about 30 days to build a new habit, which I know to be true from my forays into so many different hobbies. So at first going outside to paint every day was a bit uncomfortable and I felt a little clumsy, but by the end of the month, I had figured out a lot of things that made life easier, which includes knowing my materials like the back of my hand, 
having a workflow or a process for going out, choosing a spot, making a decision, and just getting to the painting. And as an added bonus, filming my paintings. Yes, I film them with my left hand. <laughs> it became kind of second nature. And as I edited each video to share on social media at the end of the day, I learned so much by watching my process, watching myself paint. I learned about my decision making and that helped me improve even more. And I knew the next day I would watch for certain things or I would make little adjustments. One of the biggest questions I received over the course of the month was how do you simplify a scene or how do you choose what to focus on each time? And here's my biggest lesson. It's not about painting a scene or a thing or any particular objects. It's about painting shapes, color, values. Of course we attach meaning to certain things and we want to paint them to celebrate them, but when it comes to sitting down, choosing a composition, choosing what to focus on, I always start with the most basic thing like a shape. A tree is not a tree. It's a vertical cylinder, which has a bit of blue on one side and white on the other. A rock is not a rock. It's a triangle with a bit of blue and brown and red and whatever else mixed in. And when I approach a scene like this, it takes away so much of the confusion about what I'm looking at and I distill everything down into shapes and how they relate to each other. So this is more of a practical piece of advice that you can try to use in your own situations. I highly recommend that you start with sketching if you're not really comfortable with painting outside because that's even easier. And then as you get a little more comfortable translating what you see to the paper, add a bit of color. Maybe start with just value studies or something like that. Either way, just remember that each painting is a stepping stone. And don't forget to enjoy the journey. When you look back on your paintings, each one is going to have a special memory tied to it. And that's what really matters. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it or learned something. If you did, of course, I would appreciate a thumbs up, which helps my content reach more people. So I will see you all again soon for part two of this video. Don't forget, you can ask questions and I'll do my best to answer all of them in the next video. All right, take care everyone. Bye bye.
It's the last day of the Plen Erpel challenge. So day 30, 30 days in a row painting outside. This month has reinforced how incredibly valuable it is to paint from life. I've learned so much.